In this video, we'll talk a bit about the finite line subsurface type. Now, a finite line differs slightly from, say, a regular line subsurface component in that you can set the U start and end location and the W start and end location arbitrarily on the surface. So on a regular line, for example, you can only have a constant U or a constant W value. So let's take a look at how these behave. Under the wing, let's look at this finite line that we've set. It's now highlighted in red. And you can see that we can adjust, say, the W start position. In this case, we're on the upper surface of the wing. So we're greater than 0.5. And so we're moving this W start location along the upper surface of the wing. We can do the same thing for the end location. And similarly for the end U and the start U. And so you can imagine that if you have a segment of the wing that you want to define for some type of analysis and you want those points to be there so you can come and get them later, you can set a finite line to tag those points. And so those will, uh, will automatically force that to be present in a mesh. We'll show what that looks like later. In the pod, if we do a finite line, you can see in this case, we've got one that again starts at arbitrary U and W. So we can move this around, make it shorter or longer. But something that I want to show you here is that if we change the start and we can kind of wrap it around here, you can see that, yes, we can wrap this around the pod, but notice that as it breaks across this cross section that's enforced where the pod starts to change how it behaves. So we're not really at this kind of straight barreled section here. We're now into the tapering section. There's this inflection point at that cross section. And so a finite line is also an interesting way to look at the underlying changes in the geometry of a component that might not necessarily be intuitive right off the bat. So you can see that the, in this case, W parameter is changing quickly because this section is tapering. And so it's a little visual indicator of how the surface is changing uh, rather than just looking at tangencies and things like that. So what we'll do next, since we've introduced how to control these components, Let's take a look at what happens if we run, say, CompGeom and see what the mesh looks like. So unlike a constant line or a circle or a rectangle, these are not going to separate the individual pieces into separate surface patches. It is just going to enforce that that line belongs in the mesh. So I'll show you what happens. You can see that we've executed this. So now this line, if we go to a, a hidden view here, that line is right there. So you can see that it passes through these other cross sections and CompGeom has triangulated around that component, but it is there. And so anything that you need to use to go in and pull something or coordinates from a surface reference, that is there. Similarly, back here on the pod, you can see that this line we define does in fact still spiral through the rest of the mesh all the way around. There's that inflection point and it comes around here to the other side. So CompGeom is going to enforce that subsurface line or finite line rather to be present on the mesh. But again, it will not separate things out into separate patches like it will for a circle, rectangle, line, etc.